Hello everyone, welcome to Coriander <laughs> Society Adventures. I'm Tormented by Gnomes, I'm your Game Master. Joining me today, we've got Beat Down Boulevard, Ninja Man Matt, and Pods of War. Welcome back, One Two Punch. How are we doing today? Beat Down, what's going on in your world? Um, nothing. I almost choked on water before we went live, but I got all the coughing out of me, so I'm good now. Was it purely by accident, or was it because of the unspeakable <coughs> noises that Matt was making? It was, it was, it was, um, it was by accident. It was actually before the noises. It happened a couple minutes ago. All right, yeah. Um, helpful advice, just in case this comes up again, water is not air. Yes, agreed. Mm -hmm. Right, excellent. Uh, Matt, how you doing today? Looking snazzy. Thank you. Kind of just, you know, bringing back a little bit of that old to go with the new. I'm doing really well. Today was a nice day, and I am excited for tonight. Excellent. Pods, what's happening? I'm great. I was like, what's tonight? And then I realized he was oh, talking yes. about the show. Welcome to this. <laughs> You're just fancy for you got a date later on? Yeah, um, a date with <laughs> Destiny. <laughs> I'm doing good. Um, it's it's always a good day to play some D&D. Mm -hmm. Speaking of which, let me reactivate our freaking um, channel point rewards. I had those off. There's so much going on this week. Yeah. All right. I'm turning those back on. When last we left our heroes, they were about to step through the portal over Botan Village in the world of Yokai Blossom, a planet that's been called Hana up to this point, but the name of which may yet change. After regrouping with Gaston, who had discovered the tunnels and the old infrastructure underneath the City of Steel that helped them escape, make their way back out, our heroes came to this world to fulfill a quest for Mr. Lowe, master of the Triple Union Society, the only surviving powerful criminal organization in Gaston and Asena's home city of Northport. After killing his adopted daughter, who had been turned into a vampire, Mr. Lowe promised peace between his clan of ninjas and our heroes, but only on the condition that they traveled to this other world and retrieved a mysterious dewdrop. That dewdrop turned out to be an egg. The egg of a creature called an Azrai, who's from one of the five worlds connected to the world of Yokai Blossom. But after reaching the very heart of that world and discovering the terrible truth that led to the growth of the bloom that saved it from climate change, they decided not to give this young child over to an possibly immortal, possibly a dragon criminal mastermind. They've made their journey all the way back to Botan Village, which is where the way gates that will lead them directly to Mr. Lowe's basement can be found. Etelvina, Gaston, Asena, and John stand before the gateway, having had an entire night to rest, say goodbye to their friends Jisha, even Orvi, and the mystic of the village, and discuss what they're going to do next. So before we step through that fateful gate directly into the underbelly of the Triple Union Society, I'd like to give all of you the opportunity to set your plans, get your story straight. You tell me when you're pulling the trigger and stepping through that gate. Man, Mr. Lowe's going to be a little unhappy with us. A little, a lot of unhappy, yeah. I mean, how unhappy can he be if he dies? True. True, that is kind of the point. John looks over at Edelvina. Just to confirm, you are fully on board with this, right? If it turns out this comes to blows. She nods. Up until I met the lot of you, I'd never met anybody more powerful than Mr. Lowe. But after seeing what this group can do, after seeing what you just did back there, I think you might have a chance. But just to clarify, you are going to help. This isn't going to be like a, you sit in the shadows the whole time and then, you know. I'll be in the shadows, but I won't be sitting, John. Okay. All right. Very good. She says that with no trace of malice, although perhaps a little bit of sadistic glee. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, I think a heroic speech is in order. And John spends <laughs> the next 10 minutes making there sure that... He goes over every possible avenue of failure that could occur during this uh, this little meet of ours with uh, Mr. Lowe, but also all of the boons that would come out of us succeeding in overthrowing such a tyrant as a forlorn and misbegotten dragon from another world. And 
now everyone gets a bunch of temporary hit points. What was it, 14? How many temporary 14. hit points? Because I need to up 14. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to put that on Edelvina so that we uh, we know. Yes, please. All right. So how does it work? We take him down and then we say, Edelvina, your new leader. Like, are people, are, are they just going to listen True. to that? That's actually a really good question. Edelvina crosses her arms, blows her hair out of her face and says, Mr. Lowe's followers have all sworn an oath. So I expect there's going to be a few different groups, but they'll primarily be divided into those who will recognize... No, three groups. Three groups. Those who recognize my claim through duel, through... Well, okay, it's not going to be a duel. I'm going to need your help. I'm not taking him down alone. <laughs> but those who see which way the wind is heading and back me... Those who decide to go with one of his other most trusted followers, uh, and those who just decide to kill me to avenge their master. So I think at the very least they should split the Triple Union Society, fittingly enough, into hmm. three groups. Oh, wow! It's not going to be clean. It's not as simple as cutting off the head and putting my own in place and taking over the whole body. This is going to be a process, but. As long as Mr. Lowe lives, he's never going to relinquish control. And there are too many who have full confidence in his power. What are the sorts of things that we need to be looking out for? You said that you, without our assistance, would never try to make such a move. Aside from the fact that he's a dragon, what sort of abilities does he have to bring to bear, aside from control of the weather? Mostly control of the weather and being extremely physically strong. Okay. He's very careful not to reveal the full extent of his powers, but I've seen him conjure up fogs, um, bring up, bring forth storms, but he's never done anything more dramatic than that. Most of the power that he has is based in the loyalty of his followers and the network of information and bribes and terror that he's built over the years. Of which you are keenly aware and able yes. to take full advantage of. Yes. Okay. And we're going to be in his domain, mm -hmm. so I doubt he's going to be, unless it gets really bad, going to summon up a storm in his, what was it, a throne room? Where was he presenting himself to us? I forget. He met us originally in his garden, off-site. His see. mansion okay. is a few miles east of Northport, on a coast just by the ocean, overlooking the sea. There's a smuggler tunnel that leads by boat into a sea cave that leads directly into the underground where you, he can transport smuggled goods to and from. I see. The upper, the ground floor has a tree that now that I think of it, looks a lot like a lot of the trees we just saw on our journey. Oh, interesting. I'm to bet that's where it came from. And then the top floor is his personal chambers and very few have been up there. I know the lay of the land, but I've never seen him sleep there. Oh, interesting. He doesn't spend all of his time in the mansion. And this basement that we entered to get here, also in the mansion, correct? Yes, directly underneath. Okay. And there is a tunnel. The, the water flows out to sea. There's an inlet. There's a waterfall that flows in from underground, which I've never climbed up. You'd have to swim up a waterfall, Asena, uh, underwater, like underground underwater to go out that way. So that's two entrances. And the only other entrance to the basement is up the stairs in the supply cellar. Is he likely to flee if things start looking sour, or do you think he would hold his ground until the very uh, end? Mr. Lowe would not take a fight that would be disadvantageous to him in any way. Mm -hmm. I expect he would try to slow us down, throw everything he's got at us before facing us head on. John looks to Asena. Well, if it seems as though he's going to try to escape from that waterfall... You'll be the only one that can tie him up until we can catch up with you. So just be ready. Sounds doable. If I tie him up in a waterfall, he will drown. That would no, be most won. excellent. Oh, okay. You still have that suit? Yeah. I'm still in it. Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> you're going to definitely probably need that. You know, I have not used it. I mean, I, I've been aware. Is it just an out of sight, out of mind type thing? <laughs> I think the only time you've used it was to troll Gaston. <laughs> oh my God. 
what, in what the Black Rose restaurant. About? Oh my tux. My oh, the tux. Yes. Tux. You know, fiddle the tux. Have you been in that tux the whole time? Yes. <laughs> that changes a lot of my, <coughs> my visualization of, of the entire anime arc that just happened. <laughs> yes. All tux. I mean, that's amazing, though, is the thing. Dude, we were all looking very snazzy then. Holy my goodness. Everyone there is going to think that Northport is just the land of tuxedos. No <laughs> wonder they were worried that was part of the steal. <laughs> Um, okay, well, John's gonna go around and do Gift of the Magi. Uh, he approaches Edelvina, and he takes out the manacles that he procured from, uh, Department 7. Explains to her how the magic cuffs work, and since she herself is one with the shadows, if she is able to at least get one of these latched on to him, it is going to severely limit his ability to cast magical spells. And if she's able to fully restrain him, I'm going to go ahead and click this so you have it, DM. Uh, if she's able to fully utilize its abilities, then he'll be restrained, which will be extremely advantageous to us. All right. It just takes a long time. Could I have... Asena, please roll a saving throw. Walking Armory just played We Are Being Watched from Stream Loots. Oh, no. So, uh, I need Asena to roll a wisdom saving throw, please. Eight. <laughs> All right, carry on. No, thank you. <laughs> I don't know. That's great. <laughs> All right. So, Edelvina has the manacles. Edelvina, do you know if Mr. Lowe employs any undead or uh, constructs within his mansion? I know that he had an undead daughter, but that seemed to be a bit out of the ordinary. She wasn't undead originally. As far as I know, the only people that he employs to protect his manor are ninjas, goons, enforcers, and his lieutenants. Okay, okay. Very good. Um, I'm going to just have John remind Asena and also remind the DM that uh, he presented her previously with a very large uh, pole arm, a bladed pole arm that was like a vibro weapon that had electricity coursing through it. Um, I don't know if you've gotten the stats for that yet, mm -hmm. but that would be probably very useful. You mean I don't get a new gift, John? Well, if you haven't used it, I'd say it's pretty new. <laughs> <laughs> That's Also, fair. you did get a flower or a whip that had a magical spell in it. I must use this so I can get new gifts. Yes, exactly. If you Those use this, you'll, you'll get a new gift for the uh, non-denominational corporate holiday. You know what this means, John, taking down Mr. Lowe. Yeah. We can't no. use his garden for a party. Yeah, we could. We could just ask Edelvina, right? Oh, can I turn to Edelvina? <laughs> <laughs> yes, if we kill Mr. Lowe and you give me control of his entire criminal empire, you can use the garden for a party. You have oh. my permission in advance. That's a promise. Wow. That sounds even better than Mr. Lowe's deal. What was Mr. Lowe's deal? Oh, yeah, he also said we could have a party. Yeah, we were going to give him the, do the dew drop in exchange to have a garden party. And also to end this arbitrary blood feud. Yeah. No, that yeah. was a good call. That's more like a side. Oh, I think we'll earn it for certain. <laughs> All righty. And, well, John starts looking through his bag. Uh, I believe we just received a treasure considering what would be useful. Is it possible that John could pull something out to give to Gaston that would be exceedingly useful in this particular situation? If you can come up with it on the fly, yes. Okay, well, my thought is that 
Gaston has a lot of very interesting and useful gadgets. Uh, and Mr. Lowe is a very particular uh, kind of creature, uh, most specifically a dragon. Uh, so it would be very cool if there was some kind of either serum that John had some kind of poison uh, that could be installed within a you know particular device that would be like a bane to dragons, like a dragon bane serum. Does such a spell exist? Because I could just make a gadget. I'm pretty sure such a spell exists. I'd need to do some digging to find it. Let's say for the time Ain't being no that you I found don't. a natural ingredient on... Uh, in yokai blossom that will poison a weapon so that the first time it's used it will deal an additional 2d6 poison damage and block breath weapon block the target if they fail their save let's make it 3d6 poison damage and on failed save target can't use any breath weapons until they make a new save at the end of their turn Oh, nice. So it like locks, it does damage and locks down breath weapons until they cleanse their poison. Mm -hmm. Nice. Sweet. That's one dose of poison, Gaston. You just tell me what you're putting it on and when you're going to use it. It's an one action to apply it, but if you apply it in advance, it's applied in advance. Okay. Um, it means I can apply it to stuff? Yeah, you like can put it guards? on one of your sniper rifle rounds, for example. What did you say the damage was? 2D what now? 3D6 poison plus save six. or nor or uh, it blocks your breath weapon. 3D6 plus, or no, 3D6 what? Poison damage plus poison. save DC 15 or con save DC 15 or block. Uh, but I've, I've got that written down, so don't worry about that. Oh, part. okay, nice, nice. Yeah. Does Gaston have any special preparations he's making before entering the portal to return to Northport? Um, yeah, because I have something that I think I will dismantle because I no longer need it. Okay. Because I remember making, I made two things last time where I made a... The <clears throat> iPhone? Uh, yeah, basically. <laughs> I wish I thought of that at the time, though. Um, so I would like to dismantle that and reclaim my gadget, gadget points. points. Mm -hmm. Seven hundred levels eleven. So it was like a level two spell. Uh, I'm looking at the compendium. And there is no insane dragon killing spell, which is sad. Or what? What are dra dragons are resistant to? What fire? Probably. It totally depends and on the type of dragon. Lovely. Yeah. What are the chances we know what type of dragon uh, Mr. Lowe is? Edelvina? She's never seen him in his dragon form. She of couldn't. Course. She Up until this adventure, she just knew he was ancient and powerful. She didn't know what he was. She only recently learned that he's a dragon. Now, John, you are a dragon warlock. You have a great deal of dragon knowledge. I would allow you to roll a arcana check. Oh, yeah. To see if you know anything... And could make a uh, 28. Ah. Mr. Lowe is most likely an imperial dragon. Ooh. Okay. What the heck is that? I know exactly what that is and will be very, very uh, happy to tell you. Post haste. By which you mean the DM will now speak for Matt, right? Exactly. All right, ah, cool. Okay. <laughs> Imperial dragons, uh, serpentine, long, wingless. They have shimmering, opalescent scales. Um, they're tied to the spirit world. They freely parlay with creatures of other dimensions in exchange for wisdom. Sometimes they serve as intermediaries between the gods and mortals. Uh, they can change, shape shift. They can change their colors and forms. They can fly without wings because of a magical organ in their heads, which is said, if extracted and consumed, to grant immortality. They're connected Whoa. with water and with storms. Uh, masters of wind and rain. They love the seas. They usually make their home at sea. Um, and they breathe lightning. Can control the weather. Are immune to lightning and thunder damage. Can breathe water. Can speak any... They have the power of true speak, which is any creature they speak to hears them speaking in their native language and oh, vice wow. versa. That's, That's cool. what you're doing to me. Mm-hmm. 
Holy sh- <laughs> So you said he's resistant to electri- lightning? He's Ooh. immune to lightning and thunder that. damage. Okay. He's also going to have legendary resistance, which means three times a day if he fails the save, he can just say, nah, I did not fail that save. <laughs> Incredibly <laughs> powerful and dangerous being. Mm-hmm. But oh. also probably has legendary actions as well. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Gaston, you should harvest its brain organ. <laughs> At, to do what? I don't know. I mean, like, I don't think. Uh, do you want to live forever? I don't know. Yeah, don't maybe know. You, you could, like, dilute it or something. The last time you talked to Mr. Lowe, you referred to his immortality as an affliction. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think I still stand by that. Living forever is kind of crazy, right, John? Yeah, immortality is uh, all well and good, but uh, invulnerability, that's the one. See, if I could distill that from his brain matter, now we're talking. Um, Maybe he could break it down. Is that, I don't, I don't think that, I don't think that's how that works. Why am I talking about science with you? (laughs) This is, this conversation is over. It's it's a bit macabre, but uh, it would be very very lucrative, uh, both in the scientific and uh, currency aspect, if we could harvest uh, some of Mister Lowe after this. Uh, the- <laughs> it is morbid, but not a bad idea. If anything, could we not like make dragon killing things with his corpse? Yeah, dragon killing things, dragon defending things. Uh, it's honestly, I mean, if humans were more than just gristle and flesh and they could do something useful, I'm sure they'd be harvested far more as well. Well, kidneys are pretty probably true. Ah, yeah, good but point. It's you actually quite a trade in human organs, but it's primarily uh, illicit medical and also uh, unholy magic. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, in any case, Asena. Yes. You and I uh, uncovered some rather mysterious uh, goo, was it, in our last adventure? My fire zap bottle. Yes. So during our long rest, John is thinking that we could possibly do something with that. Mm -hmm. Uh, We could pour it on his trees. Well, yeah, that, or possibly maybe it could be diluted into some kind of... (laughs) You know, enhancement. Asina, you want as... me to put it in me? Well, not necessarily. As this conversation is going on, you notice what looks like a squirrel with fish scales, golden shimmering fish scales, clambering through the trees of the village. It is very shiny. You guys, I think there's a blossom spirit here. Oh, we we are still in, uh, you know. Oh shit, we are the place. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna call it Bloom for now. John's calling this world Bloom until a better name has been addressed. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna run after the shiny. Okay, Asena departs the planning meeting to go chase the shimmering squirrel. Uh, well. Okay, I guess uh, you do that, and I'll I'll keep working on this. It's really shiny, and and maybe he's friends with Slakura. Roll a survival check, please, Asena, to chase the squirrel. <laughs> Thirteen. Okay, you have the trail as it jumps through the trees. You're also able to like. T- bounce off the trees back and forth with your horizontal running ability and keep pace. But it is, if you'll pardon the expression, quite squirrely. Uh, Back Mm. inside the village, as this chase continues, Gaston, have you made your decisions and your preparations? Yes, I would like to... I've discovered a very interesting spell that I would like to mimic. Um, It's called Sunbeam. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's that's a big one. Yeah. Um I think That's a level 6 spell, my guy. Uh I'll dismantle things for points if I must. Uh under normal circumstances you can't do that at all. You're not high oh, enough level wait, for that you're nonsense. Right. I'm trolling. Uh you have 2 points of inspiration. 
And um, John, have you figured out what you're doing with that fire sap yet? Well, that was actually I was going to ask. Um, I had I didn't know how you were going to have me, uh, you know, roll for this or anything. But John was going to find out uh, if there was anything that this could be crafted from or for. Mm -hmm. My initial thoughts was because a Sane and I each have one would be to craft some kind of balm that can be rubbed on like a Sana's fists and then have like fire punches. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, donating it to the cause to where it can amplify and, you know, replicate sunlight would be uh, an impressive use of its, uh, you know, as well. Right. You could either make it into a, with the help of the Botan village, you could either make it into two doses of a balm that would uh, give set her fists on fire for fire punches or you can use each of them as a ammo, like when processed and refined, it can be an ammo packet for Gaston's ridiculously huge laser, uh, sunbeam solar laser he's building. Could we do one of each? You could do one of each. <laughs> one battery and one bomb. Mm -hmm. yep. Okay, done. Nice. All right. Well, as long as Asana's okay with it, I'm going to check and make sure that they're okay. Asana's busy chasing a squirrel. It cannot be reached right now. Asana, roll an acrobatics check to catch up with the squirrel. <laughs> Pods, would Asena have left the ball for John to tinker with? Yeah, sure. Okay, very good. <laughs> All right. She sees squirrel, she just drops it in your just hand. Just boom, gone. Okay, good. <laughs> very good. Okay, an eight. The squirrel, continuing to flee from you, dives into the water where the koi fish are. You can make an athletics check to swim after. What is this, some sort of water squirrel? It's got fish scales. I bet you it's more shiny now. Oh, yeah. it's gl The light glimmers off of its scales. Okay. Athletics to continue your chase. 15. All right. You are running along the surface, and it's like... And you're just keeping pace by literally running on the water. And when you finally run out of movement, you dive underneath and start... Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> the squirrel's Dude, eyes bug out. This squirrel is going down. <laughs> uh, Gaston, you have built your sunbeam device Whoa. by repurposing your arcane thing and hooking it up. Do you still have that fusion generator in your backpack? Always. Okay. Uh, the catalyst for this, because this drains a large amount of power, that... Uh, Fuel that energy cell created from the fire from the dragon tree is going to give you one shot of this. Every shot after that, it has an increasing chance to malfunction because it is taking Ooh. this is the biggest aside from the gigantic railgun you built that one time, but you had some that other stuff awesome. to work. You you had a framework to work with for that, right? This is the second most powerful device you've ever created. I have glow sticks. Would that help? <laughs> no, the glow sticks <laughs> will not help. <laughs> Any other prep from you two? Oh. Oh? I actually do have something that might help. What is it? Uh, during my my time in uh, whatever that broken down, awful, uh, loom <laughs> destroyed city that we were going through, mm -hmm. uh, I found a project level six battery. Well, progress level six battery? That's good yes. for another shot. Yes, that's what I meant. Progress, exactly. So. Gaston, I you think, have two uh, free shots of yeah, this. Yeah, when John comes back, he presents this really impressive battery to Gaston and says, hey, I uh, I picked this up for you while we were rooting around out there. Hmm. I like how Gaston has these different power sources that look completely different and have to be properly calibrated, and he's got things plugged into either side so it fits into his weapon, but screw Good it. Science. <laughs> All right. Before we go back to the squirrel chase, any other prep from John and Gaston? Uh, I feel like I'm going to be pretty busy with crafting this uh, effective potion, and you know, mm -hmm. so I, I'm no, I'm I'm fine. Although done, John does have like a very like wait aha moment, as in like wait a minute, could that squirrel have been a dragon? Nah, nah, could nah, you're fine. It's okay. All right. Um, I had a go ahead. Had a question. What? Come on, brain, think of stuff. Come on, brain, think of stuff. Oh, never mind. It was just a, a thought I meant to keep to myself. I have that spell tattoo that I'm still going to use. No, no, whatever. Okay. Okay. And what spell is that? A still curse. Ooh, ooh, that's right. You never ended up using it. Asena, yeah. the squirrel swims, and it's not furry. It's scaly, so it swims quite well. And it mingles with the guardian koi spirits attempting to escape from you. Roll a perception check, please, unless you have a different strategy. 
I do not. Roll a perception check. Oh. John, you gave the saint of manacles, right? Uh, Edelvina, yeah. Or Edel, that, that we're going to attempt to put on him. Anti-magic. Correct. So what are the chances that Imperial Dragons are resistant to cold damage? They are not. Lovely. Not. Yeah. Lovely. That's good. I have an idea. What's your Ooh. idea? I have a freeze ray. <laughs> you have a freeze ray? Do you have a freeze yes, ray? Yes, I do. If I can freeze him. A Zorbian Ooh. freeze ray. Yeah. Um, Something, something, freeze him, put the manacles on. And then just beat him up. Yeah, I'm kind of thinking that if we're able to, I mean, we would shut the fight down if when he's in his human form, we can hit him with the manacles since <laughs> it prevents both spells and spell-like abilities. Uh, that would be nice. A transformation is likely a magical ability and would be halted. And even if it didn't, probably wouldn't have access to a lot of what he normally does. So, so I, have, I have another idea that I just, yes. I just thought of. Could we sneak up on him? I don't think so, since he's expecting us and we're entering. I agree. I agree. But before going into the portal, what if we all... Can you cast invisible? Is that a thing you can do still? Yes, although it's extremely difficult. Okay. Hear me out. You cast it on me and you. Asena okay. already has it because of the suit I made, which gives her uh, greater invisibility. We give her the manacles... And if all three of us are invisible, we have that. I think technically we have that two and three chance that he focuses on you or I, and that gives us Seda the angle to clasp. Okay, I on. I know I completely forgot about her the entirety of last adventure. Okay, but you do have an. Actual oh, we do have an actual ninja in your party. That's yes. a really good point. Um, I seen a sleight of hand check to capture the squirrel. <laughs> so that means. How many of these manacles do you have? Do you have two? That'd be so great. If you I, ju I just have the one, unfortunately. That's understandable. Honestly, I was I was reaching. So, <laughs> I still like this idea of mine, but that means we have a three and four chance of him paying attention to one of us instead of the manacle holder, which I think should either be a Sena or Edelvina. I think that's an excellent point. <laughs> and, you know, if it doesn't work, we fight. <laughs> What if we had just one of us return and say the others fell in their quest and we had to orchestrate a private meetup with an audience, as it were, with Mr. Lowe, with just the one of us that was visible, the others following closely behind in their invisibility and hoping beyond hope that Mr. Lowe... John turns to Elvina, there's no defenses within the mansion that are able to trace or detect invisible beings, is there? No, but Mr. Lowe always seems to know when someone's around. He has blind yeah. sight, radius 60. <laughs> that, 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 that was my question. So, okay. And then, so John, knowing that, would say as long as we don't get too close too soon, uh, we'd be in good shape. And even then, you said blind sense, not blind sight, right? It's blind sight. Blind sight, which means they have to actually see in this case. Uh, let you me have see. To be like in. Because like, I believe line? blind sense lets you know if there is a creature hiding nearby, whereas blind sight, I believe, it's it's you can just see anything, basically. Perfect. Yeah, he doesn't rely on sight. So invisibility won't work against him at all. Stealth will still work, but invisibility yes. will not work. So you can still sneak up on him, but... That's what I mean. Like, if you're walking through a room, he'll see you walking through the room invisibly, but if you're hiding in the shadows while being invisible, mm -hmm. then, you know... As yes. long as you're moving quietly, they won't see you. Mm -hmm. Very good. Okay, perfect. I say, you know, the squirrel seems about? to have slipped your grasp. How long is she willing to wait for its return? Is she just going to come back? I say, uh, returns sopping wet and sulking. Is that I correct? Think so. Okay. Thanks. Very sad. I hope I didn't break this suit. Oh, Waterproof, no. right? <laughs> John, do you still have that? digitation or no? I do, yes. <laughs> yep. Oh, immediately, as soon as as soon as Zena returns. And what happened to you? 
We didn't get the shiny squirrel. You didn't get the shiny squirrel. Okay. And John bibbity bobbity boops everything to be okay. I still feel wet. Yeah. You know, even though your clothes are dry, your pride is still, you know, soiled. Soiled it. Uh, any Soil other it. prep? Are our heroes ready to emerge? Have they settled on a plan? I'd like to take what Gaston has proposed and basically have Gaston and Edelvina do the specifics of it. Uh, and, and basically, I, I think that it's a solid plan. Mm -hmm. And I think that if we are trying to sneak up on Mr. Lowe and make sure that we can get their attention, I think one of us should be visible and requesting this audience. And that way, trying to keep all of Mr. Lowe's attention on that person. And then the other three invisibly will sneak through and get into a good position to do the sneak attack. Okay. Oh, and so you're John is volunteering you're his tribute. So you want to be the one visible person while the other three do the thing. Yes. So Edelvina likely has a way to become invisible. Asena, due to Gaston's invention, can become invisible. And John can easily turn Gaston invisible. One person invisible. Okay. I like this plan. Um, One question. The invisibility that you cast, <clears throat> does anything I do, what, what will undo it? Oh, let me show you. Attacking or using a gadget. Casting a spell, okay. basically. Okay, because I was going to ask that would finishing yes. a spell tattoo count? Mm -hmm. That would count. Yes, it will. But anything that you prep ahead of time and activate ahead of time will keep functioning while you are uh, invisible, just as long as you don't try and affect someone with a spell or attack. Mm -hmm. Huh. Interesting. That gives me... So if you have an effect that requires concentration and lasts for a certain duration, you could activate such an effect and hold on to it while you are invisible have a better idea because i, like I have something ideas. that i will just give to you oh because I, I i was i had this whole thing where like oh i'm gonna look up a spell for blinds and then i'm gonna build down like wait i have flashbangs already so <laughs> i i'm just gonna give you a flashbang i'm here for it yeah yeah and 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 you know you you do the thing you talk the talk you, you do what you gotta do I do what I gotta do. You do Absolutely. what you have to do talking to Mr. Lowe. But, 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 I think when we, I don't know, we gotta agree to like a count of 30 or some shit. But <laughs> basically, the idea is you drop the flashbang and that's like our go signal. Okay. And that's when we go for him. You chat him up, you do what you gotta do. At this point, we could just literally be watching and waiting. Or the moment, maybe a code phrase just to know, like, okay, it's go time, guys. Cover your eyes or some shit. You am getting at? Cover your I eyes. I got what you're getting at. That is not going to be the code phrase to say that. I just want to make that <laughs> fundamentally clear. Uh, it's not the phrase, but I should cover my eyes. But you should eyes? cover your eyes. Exactly. I'm so glad you're keeping up. This is wonderful. <laughs> John's also going to pass out. Uh, a potion of healing, a potion of greater healing, rather, to uh, his three companions. Oh, wow, mm -hmm. that's a banger. How much can this heal me as much as Slakura can? Uh, no. 44 but, plus uh, 4, if I recall correctly. It's a decent amount. Mm. If you I get punched him. several times, it'll fix that up. If you get shot once, it'll fix that up. If you get blasted with lightning, it'll help a bit. If Lightning you get your hand bad. cut off, it'll heal the stump. <laughs> I didn't know that, that was a laugh. possibility. I mean, it's not, but I'm, you know, just giving you a, a general variance of effectiveness to know what this will do. Just don't get your hand cut off. Please, you can't. Shot ah, with lightning. Why do I feel like a Santa could grow her hand back? Did I make that up? <laughs> Does my stump still do force damage? <laughs> You can deal force damage with your with your feet, your elbows, your knees. You the got nub options. of your hand if you lose it. <laughs> any any Hunter Hunter fans? No. Okay. I'm a fan. I just don't know much. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna avoid getting too deep into uh, the lore. The lore, but I will explain that. I will ask you about that later. Anyways, <clears throat> good plan. Thoughts, Asena? You ready? We also have ninja disguises. I mean, we could just pop out and no. be ninjas and 
I feel like that would be the most suspicious thing of all. <laughs> yeah. Just because oh he'd be God. like, why? What? He'd be like, why? Once we get inside, if they see ninjas coming out of the portal, Etelvina comments, they will be suspicious. Once we bypass that and we're just loose in the compound, then ninja disguise is optional. I'm well, a pretty good you. ninja, Edelvina. Edelvina, let me ask. If if we were able to, let's say, enter from the portal and we all go Gosu on the ninja guards that are there, beat them up, uh, hide them like uh, a certain video game, many certain video games that rely on stealth, uh, put them in lockers, dump them in boxes, what have you, uh, and then we take our costumes, would it be better for us to get to Mr. Lowe as a... Uh, retinue of your ninjas and you reporting as to what happened or do you think our original plan of having a meeting with one of us that survived and the others following invisibly would be better? either way we're sneaking up on him that's the thing either way we have to sneak up on him and he's not going to appreciate failure i mean he handed you an opportunity to make peace over something that should have been an eternal blood feud in, in his world in his logic mm -hmm. i'm not justifying it so anything short of success is going to what is going problem. to hold his attention more, being successful or being uh, unsuccessful? Being successful. Being unsuccessful, probably death. Okay, well then we're going to be successful then. Okay. I will return being the only survivor amongst our troop that was able to make it back. I will have a facsimile of the item that we were attempting to get. And as long as I don't get within 60 feet of him, I'll be none the wiser. I'll be able to hopefully hold his attention and give everyone presents the time they need to sneak up and set this up, set it, get it going. That being said, how big is the uh, the hall in which we will be attended by Mr. Lowe? Uh, his opening hall is really large, like 100 feet across. Uh, the basement is kind of compact, though. Oh, I'm certain we're not meeting him in the basement. Where would he be having an audience with us? Most likely in his grand entryway. It's a good. Is that where the throne is? Is there a throne? There's not a throne. Really? Mm -hmm. Here, at least. It's, the Grand Hall is 90 feet across. And is that where normally he holds court here with the rest yes, of his? Yes, standing up on the balcony. Okay, very good. Then that sounds most excellent. We will have been successful, and I'll give everyone here the time they need to sneak up on him. Would it be better for all of you to? scurry up the side to the balcony or to find a different avenue of approach and sneak up behind. We, better, we should probably play that one as we as we go along, depending on hey, where guards are. Kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Start yeah, by going start. invisible. Asena can communicate mentally. Right, that's bro that's so broken. Yeah, we should use that. I'm not broken. No, we're not. We were doing so good. We're still doing so good. You're we're right. Fine. It's just the little things. Anyways. <laughs> Okay. Um, I yeah, think that's... in that case, I believe that we're all set. So, Asena is activating her suit, right? Her invisibility suit? I guess so. Okay. Wait, did is is that what we're doing? I was gone while you guys were talking about invisibility. There was a scroll. I believe so, yes. Ah, that's right. Uh, yes, we are going to all be going in invisibly. So as soon as we... Before we go to the portal, everyone will be activating their invisibility and making their way through. Okay, so it's kind of sneaky. I'll turn it on. Uh, Gaston, before we were finished with our long rest, John does have a spare uh, handcuff. Did you want to try to modify that into being some kind of, you know, anti-dragon item? So... Got any points left? I do. D it depends. The big question ends up being what? What? What level spells can I Im mimic? Up to three, at least, I believe. Okay. Uh, you're a level nine gadgeteer. Yeah. So maybe four at this four. Point. Maybe five. Right. Fifth level. You can I think it's fifth, fifth level. level. Yeah, yeah, no, it's fifth level. Yeah. Great. So if there's a sort of binding type spell, I'm definitely gonna. So planar cursed. binding, interesting. So planar binding. Okay. So planar binding binds like a demon or something that you've captured to your oh, service. Yeah. 
That is not exactly what I'm looking for. And we burned both of those inspirations to allow you to create a higher level item than you normally could. So, yeah, so that well has run dry. That is a l not unfortunate. Very happy with my jerry-rigged <laughs> solar beam. And I can't wait to use that. I know it's not called Solar Beam, it's a Pokemon. Though. You know what? We can just call it Solar Beam. It's fine. We're amongst friends here. True. You know, uh, John kind of points out we could, since this this being that we're fighting is going to be very powerful, they are going to have a lot of defenses. <laughs> uh, and John, John begins setting John, about... Huh? I have, I have a thought. Tell me yes. what you think. I'm listening. What are the chances modify memory would work? Oh, goody. So here's the thing. Yes, that is an amazing proposition. Mm -hmm. I am almost positive that unless we were able to burn this Imperial Dragon's defenses, legendary as they may be, uh, they would decide that this... that would not work. I so see. Remember, he can just say three product. times a day, he can say, no, I saved. So is that like a... Is that like a... I think success. we can hold until we weaken him. Yes, I mean, if we were able to That's confirm how you fight bosses. You that, burn yeah. all their legendary resistance, then you hit him with the good stuff. I kind of, I, I don't know. What do you think? Yeah. Save that one till we've uh, weakened him. And if things get really hairy, just, you know, modify memory. Now, what would, now, I, first of all, I love it. But what would the modification entail? Because we are planning to dispose of him. Um, I don't know, modify his memory to be like, we're best friends, you would never harm us ever, and then we kill him. So note that you can only modify the memory of an event that it experienced within the last 24 hours and that lasted no more than 10 minutes. So what are the chances that time travel passed differently in Northport compared to Yokai Blossom? It's one to one. Mother bitch. Well, so what you could do with that is you would be able to modify the memory that are interaction went well that all of us had actually returned and that we were able to bring the item that he requested and that they were so happy with our service that not only did they grant us this party uh but they were able to give us a coronation where they were going to knight us for a day whatever have you make it realistic enough where they buy into it um, and, and then to do so there would be a ceremony that would be very i don't know it, we would if I got some lie to where it would expose them, we would be able to tell them we are good buddies in that we were very, very successful and they were going to reward us handsomely for this. And we would make the reward something that would make them exposed. So question, with legendary actions, do they work outside of combat? Yes. yes. Figured. I was going to, I couldn't just be like from invisibility, just like, ooh, I Okay, so legendary mind. actions don't work, but legendary resistance Re does. Sorry, resistances, that's yes. what I meant to ask. Yeah. They're slightly different. If you surprise a legendary creature, they can't use their legendary actions, which is like awful. Oh. Until but, they, until their turn. Until they take their turn, but they can use the resistance no matter what. Just until they've burned it three times, they have it. Okay. Now, I, I like where you're going with that, but if, but I, I have an alternate idea. Is it polymorph? That would, well, that would be amazing, but that would be a very temporary solution to a long-term problem. Mm -hmm. uh, I was thinking something along the lines of a contagion of some sort. Ah, uh, I, I also was looking at the spell contagion. So this is an ability that normally when a spell is saved, it's one and done. You've saved and either taken half the effect or it doesn't work. With this spell, as long as you've hit them with it, they would be poisoned and suffer from the poison condition. And on each of their turns, they would need to make a saving throw. And once they saved three times, they would no longer be poisoned. But if they failed three times, then you would apply a very potent sickness to them. Yeah. This would do uh, twofold for us. We'd be able to burn through the legendary resistances if they did not want to suffer from this effect. And it would be poisoned throughout that time, which would be uh, an incredible boon for us. Well, um, contagion sounds pretty good to me. So one if of them. The only problem is it, it has to be a touch, so I have to get close. I think that's actually how we open things up. I mean, if what if I you had contagion manacles? You could enchant them on the manacles, and we just have Asena and Edelvina jump out and just hit them with these, you know, anti-spell. You just dip them manacles. in monkey pox real quick and slap those exactly, boys on. Exactly. Exactly. Um, that could work. Hit him with the stank toe, you know? Ugh. Um yeah, okay. I like that idea. Or we go with the with the other with the other idea. I think I think it just depends on how we want this 
fight to go if we want to shut it down quick or have a long drawn out fight that so, would then lead to other things so no i i do like your contagious suggestion and i'm pretty sure that i'm gonna run with that it's just the application that i'm just running through in my head how are we just gonna get it on him is, is it something yeah but can i i don't think i can make something that will allow her to cast contagion i can make some unless true unless i well, so manacles thinking, and monkey pox. yes if you were able to put uh, a device on the manacles you're very good with syringes if you could have it to where once the manacle has oh. been locked onto their arm it injects them with the uh the fabricated spell yes excuse me mr dm i'd like to do the thing he just said <laughs> i'm going to allow that <laughs> excellent as so, these yeah. two are talking Asena is like, maybe I should go find a squirrel again. How how much longer are we going to be here? Uh, I'm good now. I think are you we're, sure? we're, we're pretty all <laughs> pretty set. Sure. Yeah. Just immediately starts working on the. <laughs> if we have five more minutes, I can go find the shiny squirrel. Will this shiny squirrel help you fight this nigh unkillable dragon better? Truthfully. Probably not. I'm saying it, would you promise you. you'd be back in five minutes? Yes, but see the. Butt. I don't have a it's watch. But for me, ah, she, that's a good point. How about Actually. this? How about this? Uh, we'll check in with you. We have our radios. Leave it. We do. Leave the channel open, and in five minutes, we're going to contact you and see how you're doing. At that time, that's your one minute warning to either finish playing with the squirrel or head back, okay? Okay. All right, then have fun. All right. Gaston and John, are you set on all the things you need to do for the next five minutes? I mean, yeah, John's going to try and help Gaston, even though he's an amazing mm -hmm. gadgeteer. John has a pretty good sense of the spell aspect of it, so he's just going to mm -hmm. kind of help make sure that it all is as good as it can be. And whatever John can do to help, whatever... Uh, you know, resources at his disposal that could be mm -hmm. of assistance. He wants to make sure this is as successful as it can be. Cool. Right now, Gaston's just using a class feature, so it's automatically going to be built successfully. No modifications Perfect. are required unless you have some sort of power component you want to throw in. Asena, oh, give me a survival component, a survival check to track down the squirrel. <laughs> I have glow sticks. <laughs> Would you shut up the <laughs> glow sticks? <laughs> All right. Um, technically, yeah, John has glow sticks. <laughs> Asena, over the next five minutes, you run around on the surface of the water, accidentally stepping on Koi Guardian's heads. John? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What? Don't worry, I'm not, I'm not interrupting you. Do your scene. I just had a cool idea. That's all. She's, so you're stepping on Koi Guardian's like Ken, and like they're just normal fish, and she steps on their head, and they turn into samurai and say, I do say, watch your step, young lady. Sorry, have you seen a shiny squirrel? Reginald? We would never betray him. He what, has sought our is... protection. Well, he was looking at me. And is that not within his right? Well, I just thought he wanted something. <laughs> if he does, he shall well exercise the proper communication of a gentleman and speak with you directly. Reginald! <laughs> Roll a persuasion check, Asina. <laughs> oh, All right. At that exact moment, you stop running on the water and you plunge beneath the surface and are battered harmlessly by indignant koi fish samurai who are outraged at the dis this dishonorable treatment and though they oh, would never oh, i say i say good <laughs> lord my word <laughs> and so when you return once again to our heroes when they've done whatever nonsense matt's about to proc uh it is with several pieces of like floating lily pads and sea and not seaweed but you know just like underwater gunk in your hair and your suit is waterlogged again oh god john's like <laughs> Uh, saying that it's been five, how we doing? And then I would assume you're like right outside the window at this point. I'm like right behind you. <laughs> <laughs> I already switched scenes. I can't deploy my my 
anime blinking soundboard, or I would. <laughs> oh I'm, no! I'm back. <laughs> she says next to your head. <laughs> oh my! Would you like some help? Yeah. Okay. Very good. And uh, his John, name is Reginald. Hey, that's good information in case we ever come back here. Yeah, probably not ever, never. <laughs> John sets about uh, drying off uh, Asena's uh, soiled clothing uh, and attempts to bolster uh, Asena's psyche against the uh, soiled pride uh, of <laughs> a, a second failed attempt at catching this squirrely squirrel, Reginald. <laughs> And what were you about to proc? What nonsense were you about to proc before we go through this portal and do this thing? So here's the thing. Uh, Mr. Lowe, not originally being of this world, but then gained uh, a bit of ascendance through this world. Mm -hmm. My thought is this. It likely would have some kind of sympathetic connection to this world, at least in a small way. Okay. And so my thought is... I have a clipping from the cursed tree that was used to bind the... Yes, was used to curse the Onayuri family and cut them off from their Blossom Spirits, effectively cutting them off from their power source. Uh, let me ask you, Mount Kilimanjaro, was that a thing before the bloom? Or was that post-bloom? The mountain existed the whole time. But like the process of ascending to, to, to Dragonhood. Uh, that was pre-bloom as well. Okay, what I am thinking is that I would like to go ahead and get uh, some of the, I'm going to speak with Shiori and explain that we are going to be bringing Mr. Lo to justice mm -hmm. and that I would like to request and would be very happy uh, with donating or providing some kind of assistance. Again, not monetarily. I'm, I know how this place works. John would be willing to put in a good, you know, evenings like either hard labor or assisting with 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 any sort of rights that would be needed whatever they need i'm assuming that uh he's opening himself up to mostly trolling from shiori but uh john is offering his services or assistance in regards to getting uh a a a sample uh a a a single use of their very precious spiritual water the kind of stuff that uh that jisha kept ken in in order to uh, you know, purify and assist things. And so my thought is by taking this purified water and this cursed uh, clipping, we would be able to uh, do a process of both magic and technology in order to infuse these things as the reagents when crafting this uh, incredible gadget of Gaston's to uh, maybe possibly do a minor curse on the dragon, uh, making this even more effective. This might is what I'm thinking using a two very powerful uh, reagents would be my hope if that would be something you would be into. This is very annoying for reasons that I cannot <laughs> divulge at this time. <laughs> well, I have a feeling they'll get divulged soon. Shiori, uh, oh, sorry, you God. owe a favor and then, but you are allowed the spirit water. So add one favor owed to Shi uh, Botan Shiori. And oh, what goodness. gadget are you incorporating this cursed spirit bomb into? The poison manacles? Yeah, the, 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 the contagious are we just, manacles. Are we, just, are we just double whammying the manacles? My thought is this. If we can make these manacles to where a being would have like disadvantage on their save and they had to make three saves, that would make this like, it kind of like, I feel like when you put the manacles on, these roots of this clipping burrow into your flesh and start seeping the curse into you. Um, but at the same time, that purified <laughs> water carries the contagion deep within your bloodstream and basically makes it very difficult to shrug off. My hope is that Lo is going to realize how bad this is and is going to burn a lot of their actions on trying not to be, you know, hit with filth fever or whatever. And then solar beam. <laughs> We're gonna, we're basically, yeah. we're going to be making uh, Mr. Lowe the lonesome dung eater, and they don't want that, and are going to be doing everything they can to avoid it, uh, opening us up to do everything else. Okay. Mega curse, spirit, water, hyper, moonbeam, friendship, blossom, bomb, manacles are ready. Solar Yay. beam with two cartridges is ready. Invisibility for everyone. Etelvina brought her own is ready. <laughs> uh, spell tattoos are ready. Heroic speech is ready. Anything else? I think I think we're Gucci. Think and what's the source? We've never been. <clears throat> what's the source of Gaston's invisibility? Uh, that would be John, John having to. Uh, <laughs> 
call upon the power of the talisman of the pack malefic okay he uses so I'm the... going to be starting with one less charge tomorrow okay are you ready to enter the gate I was yes. born ready okay I woke up this morning and I said god damn it's a good day to kill a dragon uh... and on I that note smell of Botan in the morning the way gate opens once again. The sky all around you changes. The world of bloom vanishes, and you can see the other worlds of that web all floating, just like you could before. A great sigil rune appears on the ground, and you step through the portal back into the familiar world of Northport. Shoof. Inside, as you regain your footsteps, I'm assuming Asena isn't going to astrally with this <laughs> please no. god one time <laughs> like we do an hour of prep and then a saint season astral <laughs> squirrel oh no which is a thing that exists now all right you <laughs> the beautiful fragrance and the fresh wind of the world of bloom is replaced by the rushing water and the damp overgrowth and the mysterious foliage which must be spreading from this very portal itself that surrounds the basement to your immediate south as you stand forward is a sealed doorway directly ahead of you a curtain of vines grows forward to partially obscure the gateway a single individual sits in a meditative position shrouded by the blind by the vines matt do you have dark vision i do now in america <laughs> <laughs> um, you don't... actually no uh john's gonna have to uh do something about that okay john cannot see this person people with dark vision can see him nobody else can see him john is gonna go ahead before they enter the portal or rather mm -hmm. i guess now that he knows that there's darkness here uh mm -hmm. as soon as they show up he's gonna use one of his two warlock spells to cast darkness to where he's able to oh wait no oh crap no that's darkness that's not see darkness oh god how does john <laughs> see in the dark anymore oh no glow sticks how does I, thought, I thought you were just like, <laughs> I thought you were just casting darkness. It was like, if I can't see, nobody, nobody can see. <laughs> That's the sort of, uh, what, 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 do you, what do you call that? Not pessimism. Okay, what's the P word? Pettiness? Pettiness? No. Pettiness. 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 That's the sort of pettiness that I, uh, to that which I aspire. Strive. Exactly. Uh, no, I don't have inspiration when I'm, uh, when I'm in darkness. It's disadvantage. Except for me. Wait a minute. No, I have double sight. What does my double sight do? It gives you dark vision. Is that what that does? <laughs> yes, it gives you dark vision. <laughs> that's, well, that's what it does. That's why I drop down globes of darkness and fight in them. Yep. Yeah, I can see in the dark now. <laughs> oh, that actually explains all that. that for nothing. All right. Well, let me turn on your dark vision. Yay. Um, but yeah, you, you can see somebody in a meditative stance, but uh, the portal opening is not a subtle thing. It fills with flower petals and a luminescent light. Um, disadvantage for pettiness on so that's john and disadvantage on whoever <laughs> oh, oh has dark God. vision that's a funny question that's actually a lot of people at alvina has dark <laughs> vision asena has dark vision uh yeah, this person sitting here and meditating has dark vision uh they've Gast all got dark vision yeah actually gaston do you have a source of dark vision i do not so okay all right so that's the first person to make even. a roll who's not gaston has disadvantage <laughs> okay <laughs> Gaston, you and me have, and what? I have the poison manacles, right? Yeah. Yes. Oh no, okay, no, it great. should be a Sena, right? You were giving oh, it to a Sena. You gave you? it to it. Oh, it's okay, so a Sena have the poison, and Edelvina has the anti mage manacles. Yes. That, yes. That that they sounds were gonna, they were gonna sneak up and they were gonna open up by hitting with manacles. And John, yes. you have a flashbang. I have a, I have a flashbang grenade, and I'm gonna be. Oh, we did not the... agree on the on the phrase. Well, you're gonna have to make it real obvious. Oh, you might have I... to say cover your eyes. <laughs> No, e I, easy. No, I have the phrase. And uh, John is going to, as soon as we step through the portal, um, mm -hmm. I see this lady here. And uh, John is going to lean down and on his phone, type out uh, kumquat. And he's going to hold it up in front of him as if like he is about to take a picture. And he just kind of holds it up to where, you know, everybody can see kumquat. Uh, invisibly crowded phone. around behind him. You got games on yeah, your yeah, phone? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, no, and then, and then he he makes it look like he's taking a selfie with him in the portal. Ah, uh, for later. I'll be missing all of you, and every single memory we've ever made, ever. 
looks up and sees, I don't know who this person is. Uh, you do, and so does Gaston. You recognize Mr. Zoblin. Mr. Zoblin is one of Mr. Lowe's top enforcers. Oh, that's a beard! Oh, wow, I thought that was an old lady. <laughs> uh, it's not mutually exclusive. Um, true, true. Mr. Zoblin's eyes are completely whited over. And again, John, you have a high arcana, and you've got some of this. You recognize this as a gift of the dragon. Oh. You can hear some scuffling off in the corner. Uh, gift of the dragon. What, what, what be that? It's a draconic gift. Which uh, does? Dark vision and 10-foot blind sight. 10-foot blind sight. Okay, ten, very good. 10-foot blind sight, yes. John moves up and very quickly uh, approaches this person, mm -hmm. Mr. Zoblin. What's, ah, what's your passive perception, John? Uh, that'd be a 21. 22, 21? sorry. It's 22? 22. Uh, I hate my life. I hate my life. I hate my life. I hate my life. There are ninjas in the shadows. Yay. There was always ninjas in the shadows. Mr. Uh, Carmichael, welcome back. Mr. Lowe oh, is eager please, for please, your please. My father return. was Mr. Carmichael. I go by John Carmichael. Very well, John. Carmichael. John Carmichael. John and Carmichael. Carmichael. Spent a lot of money on the sign, you know. Mr. Lowe is eager for you and your delivery. We are expecting more to return. Yeah, about that. We're going to need a little more delivery on this uh, delivery of mine. Uh, I kind of lost some good people back there. You did not inform us the kind of hack we were going to be going into on the other side. Roll I thought we were just going to pass some mountains and then go to a storm. But, you know, there was an entire world at war, which honestly I should have understood because every single freaking world I get sent to is at war. Eh, what are you going to do? And John rolls deception. With uh, disadvantage with because you have dark vision. Oh, well, <laughs> horse poo. Uh, Actually, disadvantage go. for pettiness. Oh, well, there we go. Uh, I'll roll that again. And uh, yeah, <laughs> suck it. Uh, hold on, I'm not, I'm not done yet. I'm not done yet. Actually, yeah, no, I'm done. Yeah, you're done. Woo! Hmm. We all make sacrifices in the line of duty. Were you successful? Absolutely. May I'm I see successful. it? May you see it? Absolutely not. Hmm. I found out this thing is uh, a little more than just a new kid. We're going to have to have a discussion about what this is. Hmm. I'd like to see Mr. Lowe now, please. Roll persuasion check, please. And I'm going to go ahead and activate my draconic gift, Dragon Fear, as part of this. So if you could please, before I make a persuasion, if you could make a wisdom save. Can do. Natural, Natural 20. 20. Well, yeah, I'll go ahead and make that persuasion check now. Uh, is this also a disadvantage? Uh, yeah, but this time not for pettiness. This kind of time because you have dark vision. Yeah, 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 yeah. Actually, I should have made my insight check with disadvantage. Hey, there you go. So yeah, this is this is just a flat persuasion check because I have dark vision. Oh, okay, very good. I'm here for it. I gotta figure and out who here has the highest yeah. passive perception. Uh, 19. 19. Persuasion. Hmm. Very well. Please wait while I consult with Mr. Lowe. And uh, mate, just wanted to remind you, in case that for some reason wasn't a success, I have a mm -hmm. uh, feature where if I do fail a roll, I have another chance. So nope. just wanted to put that, that was out success. Uh, oh, good. Instead good. of demanding to see the proof of your results, he's going to go say, hey, boss, they want to talk to you. Where do you want to meet? OK, perfect. And uh, I would like uh, Mr. Zoblin to please escort me where I need to be waiting. Oh, wait right here, please. I'd rather not wait in the uh, in the dark, murky undercarriage of this place, uh, especially surrounded by ninjas and John Jesters, the two hiding uh, in the brush. I I'd like to be taken somewhere uh, warm, inviting, a grand hall, perhaps, somewhere where I can wait uh, pleasantly for his eminence. Roll persuasion again, please. 
and that would be a 17. Okay. I did just go on a harrowing adventure and lose three of my close personal uh, associates. Friends, you might even call them, in the line of duty. Hmm. You must understand I am oath sworn to obey Mr. Lowe in all things, but I would be happy to invite you past this, he gestures around at the flowing water, um, into somewhere a little bit more warm and dry, and then the arrangements you request can be made. Fantastic. That sounds wonderful. Please lead the way. All right. Uh, Mr. Zoblin is going to guide you across the bridge. You can see a John, set of three double doors on the far side. As we're walking, John is going to send a text to Gaston. Stay 10 feet away from anybody with white eyes. They can see you. Huh. All right. Having received that information, as John is led away, what would the rest of you like to do? Also, John, you can kind of see a curtain of oh. vines and such right here. Uh huh. But you get the impression there's a hollow space on the on the far side. Ooh, can I and, hear anything? Uh, roll perception. Rolling perception. I'm rolling perception. I'm pretty good at listening to things with my ears. That would be. You hear the, the shuffled sound, the muffled sound of a chair scraping very quietly against stone, just briefly on the other side of this. Multiple footsteps. You also see just around this corner, there's a barrel here, and uh, you get the weird feeling that you're not alone over here as well. John starts texting all this to Gaston, everything okay. he's seeing. Uh, Am I Party. supposed to be able to see all this? This looks like a lot of stuff. Yeah, you can see up here there is a dock with a whole bunch of booze, crates, a bunch of goons, and one big, ugly dude. Big, ugly, shirtless dude with brass knuckles sitting there, arms folded across his enormous chest, eyeing you. Perfect. John. Mr. Gong, another one of his lieutenants. Didn't one of these people, correct me if I'm wrong, mate, didn't one of them die at the garden party? There was a lieutenant. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was one of his lieutenants, though. That guy oh, has okay. been marked on the dead list for a while. Okay. Trust me. Cool, he cool, was cool, like cool, an cool. underboss. He wasn't one of the big three. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Okay. Cool. Yeah, Just I think it was sure. Guangui. He's, yes, yeah, he, Guangui. He's yeah. Absolutely obliterated. Okay, cool, 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 cool. Okay. Uh, John's texting everything he sees. Asena, Gaston, and Etelvina. What would the three of you like to do? None of you can see each other. I don't think John's really um, selling the fact that I'm dead. Like, do you think he'd be this well put together? That's going to Gaston, <laughs> by the way. <laughs> I get plus one XP, Gaston. You're muted. Damn it. I can respond, right? Yes. <clears throat> With the spell. Um, and it's not a spell because if it was... Oh, no, her oh. invisibility would be fine. Ignore me. Okay. Um... I'm gonna say, oh yeah, maybe. But also, they seem convinced. So, isn't that all that matters? Well, it's, it's kind of sad. Sandy, you're not actually dead. But if I was, that's different. John knows you're not dead. This was a whole plan. Eh, I guess he's not as good as an actor. It's us. Nobody can see me, but Gaston is rolling his eyes extremely hard right now. <laughs> like, the whole <laughs> neck and everything, like... You ever see a man roll his entire head? Yeah, yeah. literally. <laughs> well, you haven't, because he's invisible. That's true. Remind me when this is all over to get him some acting lessons. Because uh, they might be convinced, but uh, I can see right through it. Yeah, good thing everybody, not everyone has your... Uh, Eternal wisdom, Asena. Thank you. I guess I was just going to keep walking. All right. <laughs> if you are following behind, you need to move at half speed and uh, roll a stealth check, please. Oh, you have to sneak past these two why? ninjas because you have to move very quietly. I don't like that. Even though uh, you're invisible. Do we get advantage because we're invisible? Yes, you do get advantage because you're invisible. Also, Asena, for some reason, your hit points are messed up. I'm going to make sure that's fine. 
She she, she trips on her ego when she was walking to the portal. A 14 Gaston. A 15 Pods. Oh, wait. That's not with advantage, though. Correct. Roll again and take the better of the two. Oh, God, you know what I miss? Yeah, because we're invisible. God, I miss Pass Without Trace. Wait. (laughs) Um... Oh no! I, I guess, does greater invisibility do anything special with this kind of stuff? It just means that you're invisible and you can't. You don't pop invisibility when you attack. Oh, but it, okay. it only lasts for a minute, though, right? Mm-hmm. You yeah, have one minute. Quick. Jeez, we got to be quick. Okay. All right. So a fourteen is just barely enough to skirt past the ninjas. Mm-hmm. Uh, mate. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I know that technically we can't see them, but where's that Alvina? I know they've been here the whole time. That is an excellent question. <laughs> don't uh, don't worry about it. Name's Elvina. <laughs> Some call me the White Ghost. Been here the whole time. <laughs> That's oh. how good she is, guys. Obviously, like... we didn't even know she was here with us, even though she went to the portal with us. That's mad. No, no, no. Trust me, you don't know where she is. You oh, hope she's oh. next to you, but she has a plus eighteen on her stealth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You do not know where she is. Wow. Uh, we don't need to know. She could roll a two and still... That's fucked up. And you can feel um, <laughs> completely, completely at ease about these next two rolls that I'm making. Okay. Don't, I do feel great. Don't worry about yeah, this I attack think. roll I'm making with advantage. Yep, not even... The, like, or, or, 13. Or, or this yeah. other attack roll I'm making with advantage. Uh, 27 does hit. Or this. That also looks like it hits. And just to remind our other friends, Don did did point out that there was two ninjas right here, just so Mm -hmm. the two of you are aware of that. I mean, you can't see them yourself, but at least, like, you know, you know they're there. I'm kind of scared. Okay. John, you reach this doorway. The rest of the party is invisibly right behind you, a safe distance away. A lot of you can go ahead and just move, like, one more, maybe to this uh, right here. And um, let's see. Ooh, I like the floor. Mr. <laughs> Mr. Zoblin is going to open the door. He withdraws a key from a key ring, and he is okay. going to open a door to the north. The double doors swing open, revealing north. yes, mm. an illuminated warehouse. This is where smuggled goods are brought in. There are John two. makes a point of saying that does not look particularly warm and inviting. Of course, I'm already breaking protocol by bringing you here, and it will be only a moment before I secure the permission that I need to do more for you. John narrows his eyes. Uh, Continue go- describing the room. <laughs> <laughs> you can't narrow your eyes at the dungeon. John can't narrow his <laughs> eyes at the dungeon master. Okay? I did. I, nar- I narrowed him at uh, Mr. Zoblin. <laughs> All right. Where's my basement? Da, 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 da. There are two statues of Ausonian heroes from the height of the empire, both Ooh. quite heavy and expensive. You suspect they may be contraband stolen during the last great war when the Ausonian empire fell 20 or so years ago. Uh, all sorts of stolen goods. Um, there's two ores in here. Lots of uh, contraband, drugs, alcohol, all received for shipping. There's two doors, three sets of doors that lead away from here. One leads to the docks. One is a single door. And of course, the one you just entered through. Mr. Uh, Zoblin will enter. Mr. Zoblin. Is that the, uh, is that the east wing? It was once a theater for private performances. Uh, our, a handful of our trusted men idle their time there now. You have a theater that you're not bringing me to and you're sending me to a loading oh, it's zone? it's in no shape for theater these days, Mr. Carmichael. Uh, Mr. John Carmichael. Mr. John Carmichael. It has long been neglected. Mr. Lowe seeks entertainment elsewhere and no longer has need of it. I ah. assure you, this will be much drier. Oh, okay. Very good. 
And oh, by the way, uh, there's a uh, there's a cat here. Chester, we didn't leave, we, we didn't leave Chester back uh, been here the whole time. Been here the whole time. We we didn't we didn't leave him back in uh in you stay with Slokura. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Zoblin will usher you into this chamber. Okay, very good. John makes a comment. He's he's mostly saying it to himself, but loud enough so that when Mr. Zoblin can hear. Mm -hmm. Oh man. Well, even though I miss him, it's a good thing that Gaston isn't here. Those statues would not last long. Hmm, how gauche. Gaston and Asena, you must speed up a little bit because Mr. Zoblin is going to close the door behind. He's going to wait for John to enter and then he's going to close the doors behind. John's going to stand like right in his like eye view. Okay. And uh, uh, he's going to say, this is exactly how he would do it. And John pulls up his coat and starts going, there's something in there and I'm going to get it. And then he would break it. Roll a deception check, please. <laughs> and he looks like he's putting on uh, just the biggest act he can. <laughs> is that you asking for a performance check instead? What? No. Oh, okay. no. I, I'm just saying he, he looks like he's actually like trying to pretend to be Gaston in this. Right, like, which is why I said if you wanted me, to I'm Gaston. I think there's stuff inside of any statue I come across, and I'm going to bust it open and find out. Okay, both of you roll stealth checks with advantage, please. <laughs> Yeah. I did it. Nice. A 23 from Asena and a 16 from Gaston. All right. Well, none of you know this character's passive perception, so we're just going to go ahead and move right along. Uh, you may enter the room and place yourselves where you want to be. I would not be too close to him. Remember, he has blind sight within 10 feet. Right. Yeah, I, I like... I like this. Oh yeah, we have Chester. Love that guy. I'm on the box. <laughs> and uh, to kind of help help out with this, Chester's going to be moving. Uh, whoever the closest person to Mr. Zoblin is, Chester's going to mm -hmm. be at the very edge. And then as soon as Mr. Zoblin, if they kind of go into range, is going to like hiss and like kind of make them like you know i'm not comfortable with you being in my personal space and just kind of <laughs> goes and like does that cat twirl where they move around chasing their tail and then sit down and go ah yes this is a good spot mm -hmm. right in front of the door and john says i excuse my friend he's had a long arduous journey and he just kind of leans up against this set of boxes here mr zablin gives you a slight bow and then proceeds to this door right here John kind of turns and sees if he can peer past the. Uh... All right. I will now open the door. Yes, please. Mm. A library, a record room. Mr. Lowe himself sits in a red wood chair. Oh. With a part with a scroll bound in uh, cedar plates with a jade medallion upon it of thin vellum sheets studying its pages you catch a glimpse of him as mr zoblin enters the room and then closes the door you hear etelvina you hear her voice whispering in the shadows from where over here very good Got the John guards. John moves up, bumps Got into the Gaston. Ah, oh, oh, okay, good. Got the uh, guards in the theater. Oh, perfect. Okay, we don't have long because Asana's invisibility is going to expire uh, shortly. So we need to make sure that we're ready. Okay. It's coming in here, right? I God, I hope so. If anything, we can. He's in there. We can kick down the door and just he's, jump him if we need to. I would suspect, unless he's planning something in this room. Either he's going to ambush us in this room or he's going to wait until he's up in position in the Grand Hall where he'll have a lot more maneuverability. Where ah. can, can, can we get the two of you up in the Grand Hall now? Yes, yeah. we just go down south through these doors and then east. I got the uh, one of the guards keys. She jangles one of the keys. 
why don't you and Asana go get in position before Asana's mm -hmm. invisibility is up? Gaston and I'll stay here. We'll see if we can lead them into the hall. If we're not in the hall in, gosh, two minutes, or if you hear the sounds of battle, just come back and help. Okay. Ready? Asana, are you still here? I'm still here. Okay, good. Was the theater cute? No. What? God, no, it's awful. Oh. There's mildew down there. All right. Yeah. So we just go south through this door and then immediately east. Who's going to open the door? Asana, you do it. You have the magic suit. What does that mean? Okay. Technically, it's science, but okay. What is magic but science? We don't understand. I opened the door. Okay. True. Oh, shit. Chester moves up like they were the ones like hauled it open and like pushed into it. <laughs> I, I like that. I like that. You see two ninjas. Mr. Gong holding a very large barrel with a huge green skull painted on it. Oh. And Mr. Hang, one of the other lieutenants. And they all stare into the room at John. <laughs> John is leaning up against uh, this box right here next to Gaston. Uh, howdy, gentlemen. I didn't ask for refreshments, but it's much obliged, although that looks a bit too strong for my taste. <laughs> at that exact moment, the door to Mr. Lowe's study opens. And he walks oh. into the room with Mr. Zoblin at his side. Well, shit. Go time is now. And we'll find out what go time <laughs> looks like right after this what? short break. Don't go anywhere, folks. Coriander Society Adventures will return.